Hey Magic Makers, Mom Virella here. So at Kimo Kawaii, I get to help with the Dragon Ball panel. So I wanted to share with you guys. Hope you enjoy. And this is my first time hosting one of these, so I'm totally not nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Am I home? Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, everybody else is on their way, but thank you so much, Chris Rachel, for being here. Well, thank you. Thank you. Glad to, have fun. Glad to be here. Glad to meet you guys. And of course, you all will know this is the voice of Mr. Satan. Yes. He's the strongest of all of them. So I, am, I am the martial arts champion of the world. Okay, it doesn't say it's like a little tiny piece of it, it's the whole thing. Okay. What is, what is that? <laughs> well, let's talk about that. That should be the panel. Well, you're the champion. Right. Okay. I think that's all we need hey. to know about that. Yeah. All right, next show. Okay. Uh, well, guys, I'm kind of get a little things, a couple things okay, started here. Um, right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> no. Okay, they are on their way, so. <laughs> I hope I left my phone back at the table. Oh, no. Appreciate it. This is, uh, did you? Oh. Well, good for you. No one cares. All right. <laughs> so, Josh Martin, ladies and gentlemen. Josh Martin, Ooh. voice of Majin Boo. Uh, some of you might think, really? He makes that noise? <laughs> yeah. Do it. It's true. <laughs> Ta da. <laughs> it's like magic. So I know everybody else is on their way. I'm going to go ahead and hand off this mic to y'all then so that y'all don't have to share one and us. Uh... <laughs> well, I wasn't going to share this one. <laughs> well, you're my best friend. So no, this one's mine and they can share. <laughs> We're best friends because we appreciate the fact that we have our own. Yes. I know what is mine, and, and uh, Josh also knows what is his. It's true. <laughs> not very often do we share. No, that's not true. That is I didn't not say true. it was not, it didn't happen. I it was not very often. There are certain things we have no problem sharing. Just, you know, like, I'm sure you have friends that you have no problem sharing certain things with. Right. Yet others. We travel a lot. We go to a lot of conventions. We do. We do not share hotel rooms. That is not something. <laughs> no. We do. We are friends. We hang out together at the conventions a lot. We sign autographs with everyone. But we get our own room. Yes, we do. And for the record, we, so, we were already roommates for several years while going to acting school. So we yes. sit there. Don't ask. Yes. 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 Beautiful Lisa Bowman. Elise Bowman. Elise Bowman. Elise Bowman. My wonderful, beautiful granddaughter. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, that's right. Yeah. So y'all being here is like a family reunion at this point. Oh, and here's that. Kind of. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Cynthia Kranz. Hello. Oh, yes. Chi Chi and her Chi Chi's. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. So, these microphones are great. What 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 kind are these? UHF. They're lightweight too. Yeah. yeah. They really are. So thank you so much, guys, for being here. Uh, of course, um, we're so honored to have y'all here. You know, the first ever Andy Convention Conroe. We were just, I was just telling everybody, thank you for being here. We're so happy y'all are here. Um, this being, you know, Dragon Ball Z is like an epic, <laughs> has become an epic thing that's last for generation at this point basically this is being handed down from parent to child and i love that did you see this coming i'm just curious like i've got to ask i'm, I'm going to be the first question i'm sorry guys y'all want to ask questions but uh, i wanted to ask the first one i just did you see this coming whenever you started what you were doing with this no because when i started um venomation had just got the rights from ocean dev and we were trying to voice match the females from ocean I didn't know what anime was. It was 1999. I was 30. I was just a working actor. So I remember thinking, I don't know if anyone's ever going to see this, but I'm so excited. For it. <laughs> and every time a saga ends, I grieve and think it's never coming back. Nobody else? <laughs> <laughs> Do I speak for the group? No, I, yeah, I, I second that emotion. Yeah, absolutely. I second that emotion. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, we had Everybody's no ready. idea. The only person I knew that even knew what Dragon Ball Z was was our friend Mike McFarland, who played Master Roshi. 
and was the reason that I actually went and auditioned because he's like, hey, these guys are you know, needing well, actors to do voices for cartoons. I'm like, you got a part? He's like, yeah. I'm like, you got a part? They'll get me a part. <laughs> no doubt in my mind. And well, I was right. So uh, I went and auditioned, got the part of Mr. Satan, and, and had no idea that that we would be doing this 20 something years later. I've never played a character from teenage to grandma. <laughs> <laughs> you get to know All the way. Well. All the way. Right. Yeah, and I second the second the second. Do you need, do you need the microphone? I don't. Whatever. No. Come on. Whatever. I feel like we're all. So I just like to be louder sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we had because I they started before <laughs> I did, and I came along for GT, but I had no idea and had no idea I would be doing conventions all these years later. Like I'm still amazed and excited that we get to do this. Me too. Yeah, it's a real, it's a real privilege, honestly. You know that you were involved in something that you just had fun with. You know, as an actor, you know, you just want to be paid as an actor to go out there and get some work and get paid and be a working actor and have that be, you know, your career. That's the goal, right? And so the fact that something, uh, you know, that came to us sort of secondhand. You know, we're like the secondhand people. To get to this we're thing. like the Simpsons. And now, <laughs> yeah, now well, the reality is, is now <laughs> that show, regardless of the Japanese and the actors there, the English dub is far more uh, seen and known than the Japanese one. It's just the reality of it. Uh, so, in a way, in a way, you know, I'm, my voice is cracking. In a way, in a way, I feel like I feel like we have become these characters, and uh, we we thank you for enjoying it and. Uh, yeah, it's it amazing. <laughs> it's so amazing to have people care. That was my goal as an actor. It's like, I, I want to work professionally. I don't want to move to a different coast. I know I'm not going to get wealthy. I don't want to be famous, famous. But I want people to care about my work, and I can't think of any other genre where people care so intensely to the point that they are bullying each other on <laughs> Facebook <laughs> or any group pages because they're so passionate about the show. Right. I'll take it Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna ask one more, and then uh, sure. if y'all wanna open up and uh, ask, y'all can take over. Huh? But uh, okay, so y'all y'all were together in the original Dragon Ball Z, basically the three of you were working together. So y'all like the OG in the first show. Yeah. So to say, whenever you joined the cast with uh, the new Dragon Ball GT, yeah, that Dragon Ball Z GT. I'm not saying Dragon Ball GT, yeah. GT. Yeah. So when you joined the panel. Did you feel like you were joining a family, or did you feel like it was something new and you had to kind of? I'm just, I'm curious. Is like, this was your, was this your first voiceover? It was. So I didn't know much. So I loved animation. I didn't know anime at the time. And speaking of Mike McFarland, I was doing an improv. I was in an improv troupe. He was in an improv troupe that Chris and Josh were in. And so we were at dinner. Uh, with a couple of my improv troop members and Mike, and they were talking about anime, and I was like, oh, I love animation. I want to learn about anime. How do I get an audition? So Mike got me the audition for Pan. I miraculously booked it. Of course, fell in love immediately. Didn't know much about Funimation at the time. Didn't know much about anime. <laughs> And immediately, I mean, everybody who worked up there was so nice, and they bring you in and um, make you tell you about the show, make you feel comfortable with what's going on with Dragon Ball GT. And so I felt like I very quickly got caught up to you know speed with what's going on in the Dragon Ball world, and of course fell in love with it immediately. So. I feel so lucky because Dra Dragon Ball GT is what launched me into anime and what launched me into voice acting in general. And she also was on a softball team with Jake Gyllenhaal and John Hamm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this weekend. You're welcome. Much later, but totally unrelated. Yeah. Uh, okay, does anybody have a question that they wanted to ask? All right, well, good night. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Enjoy your day. We'll just start asking for this. Yeah. Year. So, okay, I'm an inspiring voice actor. I've done a lot of your voices. But I'm, the hardest time getting into anime, like, 
what is the protocol to get into anime? Like, I have demos it's and things like that. Where do you live? Thank you, thank you. Well, that's a good start. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you, uh, so I talk, I talk to go classes go from like John Swayze and, and, and people like that. And we have to actually went up to Dallas and took some classes from that. Yeah. And uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm having a hard time. It's the hardest thing I'm trying to get into. The most thing that I want to do, and it's the hardest thing that I'm having a good time getting into. Do you have an agent? Yes, I have two. Oh, you do? Yeah. Are you auditioning already? For yes. Anime? They send me stuff every day. Okay, every day well, that's good. That's that's I don't have a lot of. I get. It's more commercial and narration stuff. I get every now and then I'll get some animation stuff, but it's. One thing it'll hit, man. You're on the right track. Yeah. You already have the education, the representation, and you're a working actor mm -hmm. with auditions. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a numbers game. So. Yeah. I sold fiber optic because the police are coming back. Um, but I feel like it, it was a really good training, good training ground because when you're in sales, you just know it's a numbers game. You have to make a certain number of calls. You have to, uh, if anybody's done sales or retail or whatever, you just have to, you have to get out there and make the calls and go see the people. And you can't take it personally. Acting, I feel like, is the same thing. It's just you're the product, your voice is the product. So you have to audition, 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 and audition for your agent. You, it sounds like you're doing the right thing. You're taking the classes, you're meeting with people, you're networking, you do the audition, you make sure your agent knows that you want to do anime, and one day, that audition will happen. You just have to keep at it. Have you sent a demo to Sentai? And you not crunchable, yes, I have sent my demo to a couple of guys at the same time. I'm sure you'll be on the side of the table soon. <laughs> <laughs> be persistent. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but don't, and don't have that fear <laughs> worry that you're uh, bothering somebody because you want that's to work. Not, that's, yeah, it's not, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 I mean, as long as you're being professional and mm -hmm. being courteous, no problem. Right, but if you're being overbearing and pushy and mm -hmm. those kinds of things, yeah, but you're going to the bottom of this or you're not being looked at at all. Right, but if you're being professional, hey, I'm looking to get some opportunities, here's my stuff. Mm -hmm. A few minutes later, maybe you can hear anything back. I just wanted to pop in again uh, and, you know, hear some maybe newer stuff or just, you know, uh, if you, you didn't think of me or you know whatever. I'm happy to do this part. Yeah, yeah. I'm, happy, yeah. I'm, yeah. Happy, yeah. I'm yeah. happy to do it. Yeah, that's my main thing. I'm happy to do I'll play the guy that dies. Yeah, that's what my shot. It pays the same. And while in bit parts are a great way for people to hear you do things that they haven't heard before. Okay. Thank you. Keep back. Thank you. Thank you. Have any of y'all ever thought of yes. audiobooks? Josh, what? Have any of y'all ever thought of audiobooks? My wife. <laughs> uh, so he's asking if we've thought of audiobooks. I have done them and will elaborate. What about you guys? Uh, no. I don't like them in general. <laughs> Which is odd because that's a big part of me. Dubbing. But no. Right, um, but that's in like short I would be happy sentences. to do it. I think it, it's probably a lot harder than anything else because you're doing all the characters. I would like the opportunity at some point. So if you're thinking about getting into audiobooks or getting into acting, it's a great way to control things on your own. Um, and I don't know if you're asking about us or asking. I'm an author, so. Oh, you are? Yeah. So I have, I have done um, one audiobook on my own. It's a lot of work when you do the engineering. So going forward, like in the past, I have one time, for example, where I've done audiobooks for 10 years. But I've always had an engineer do it, and I I read children's books for you know educational purposes for kids anywhere from four to eighteen years old. Any audiobooks I've done, I've had another engineer. Now, the one audiobook, like I said, that I've done through ACX, and if you're thinking about like as an actor, you want to get ACX, which is an Amazon company, is a great way where you can upload audio samples, you can do the engineering, you can pay for an engineer to do it, which is what I will do going forward mm -hmm. because it does require a lot to meet ACX's standards. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great way to do it at home, and and I love doing audio I, I just don't love to be an engineer. I recommend befriending an engineer <laughs> and making them your best friend.
<laughs> as best you can, keeping them close because they know way more about this than I do. You know, in fact, I like to say often when I'm in the booth, the only person doing any work in there is the engineer, right? They're the one pushing and pumping and floating things around and drop, dropping things. And, <clears throat> they know, make so the magic. They, can they do. They really do. If your read's perfect but it's too long or short, they just make it long. How they manipulate that they manipulate that keyboard <laughs> at such a quick level and understanding of how everything's placed and done and put and it's it's uh, it's magic, you know, as far as I'm concerned. So But if you're an author and you need help, I can help you or I can oh, recommend I, the I type actually, of person. I actually have help one on you. audio book. I had a Broadway action script. That's what I was doing. Oh, okay. Ah. I was gonna say I, I recommend people as well. Okay, you've got the right person for sure. You know, we were talking earlier about uh, the, the original in the Japanese. Did you ever feel like you needed to kind of try to base your character off that? Or what was your inspiration for your voice and your character? Because you, you bring that character to life, right? You know, so where, where did you get your inspiration? Chi Chi, for instance, like, is not the same as the way that you portray her in the Japanese, right? Isn't she a lot more? No, you, I, I go with like two things. First of all, Chris Sabat. When I auditioned <coughs> to match that voice, there was no yelling, screaming, bitching, whining, crying. It was, oh, well, boys will be boys, which she has said never. <laughs> and so he's, when we start, he goes, no, you got to rough her up. She is a princess, but she's like a trash princess. She's white trash. <laughs> and so then if you look at how, if you, when you look at the animation and her mouth is making a rectangle and her teeth are coming out, <laughs> There's bubbles coming out of her head. That's a yow! <laughs> Sadly, it's very easy for me to have that awful tone. That's just where it goes. Um, you're like, is it hard to do cheek I'm like, I wish. <laughs> I just have that awful screechy. But only, I just, this is what came out of my mouth when I saw the what, what was happening on the screen. But I don't sound anything like the Japanese. So it just came naturally whenever you read the, the part, basically. With Chi-Chi specifically, like, whenever you saw the script and read her part, it is just a natural progression of this is how she would feel. With the time. help of Chris Abbott going, no, she's not refined. She's she's <laughs> awful. She's <laughs> rough. <laughs> so, what about you guys? You know, the, the original in the beginning. Nowadays, when we record anime, we listen to the Japanese. Correct. Uh, the you know the, we'll listen to that scene and then we'll go in and do our you know, uh, back then we didn't have that. That wasn't a thing. There was no Japanese. We didn't even have Japanese <laughs> translations. In fact, in the early Dragon Ball Z days, uh, the script was being written off the Spanish <laughs> dub because we had it was, it, was, it was Texas. It was it was Texas, and we had a lot of Spanish speakers, right? But we didn't have any Japanese speakers. <laughs> And so there wasn't this connection with Toye, you know, giving us direct translations. And I never writers. knew that. Yeah, we were we were translating it from the Spanish dub and then making it fit so for American audience. So even if you translate, right? Well, what what what, <laughs> what we found is over time is that the Spanish dub was really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and so our dub our dub was wrong. And so like things that they said in the Japanese are nothing near what we actually. <laughs> So, so by the time we got done with the show, and then they were bringing it back with DBZ Kai, that was a, <laughs> a shot to say, okay, we can get rid of all that stuff, and we can actually do it the way it was intended. I always wondered why we did that. I've just been blissfully. Well, Tori <laughs> <laughs> <Tony, Tony laughs> likes, likes money, and so they they made Dragon Ball Z Kai to be just a manga. <coughs> Of the story without the flood book, it's in flood episodes. Which is why I wouldn't agree with that. Well, that's why it went from like 300 and something episodes yeah. of Dragon Ball to like 120 or something. Right. And it's just much more streamlined story. It's just the manga. And the second time around, I, mean, I think we nailed it, honestly. It was Dragon Ball Z Kai, in my opinion, is a thousand times better than Dragon Ball. It is so nice to get a mulligan and get to like a do-over. I remember that scene and now I know how to flat match and right, I know yeah. my character. And now I, I understand this character more. I understand what's going on a little bit more. Yes. And we're going to do it right this time. Yes, that was so a treat. So if you haven't watched Dragon Ball Z Kai, mm -hmm. that's a 
really good yeah, version of Dragon Ball Z. I, I mean, you're like, oh, the nostalgia of it all, but this is actually us getting it right. <laughs> you know, and doing it better. Like, I think voices, acting, we everything, all got writing, everything was just better. Because dubbing was new to all of us. Sure. And I felt very mm. awkward. It was like, I, I didn't have a flat match. I was just... <laughs> Say the loudest as I can. It have to fit. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You have to match the the mouth. You have yeah, to match the sometimes. So Why you're seeing the line for the first time? So you <laughs> you're doing you parse that out a little bit. It's always good, especially these days. We listen to it in Japanese, so you kind of get a dry run at listening to the timing, the tone yes. of the scene. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then you yourself can take your English line and kind of play along with what the Japanese line and kind of understand, oh, okay, well, well, I may need to shorten that a little bit and then look a little long more. I need to speed that up. That wasn't short. That was too short. But like and you then, said, they didn't used to do that for us. Right, but then you do it, and then you, the, the engineer places that file in the proper place, and then you see if it fits. And if it does, great. And if the director liked the line, great. You move on to the next line. Or the next, the next group of lines, I should say. Sometimes sometimes lines can be recorded one at a time. Sometimes they can be recorded as like a scene or a short <coughs> scene. So like two or three lines at a time, something like that. Which is why speed reading is another good skill to have if you want to dub. <laughs> Just depends on the director's. <laughs> so back to your question. I actually really like Josh's story <coughs> and how he came up with his voice. <coughs> That's what I was actually about to ask. I was like, you're real quiet there. Sure, yeah, no, I was getting in there. I was getting in there. Uh, actually, um, my voice came from doing the comedy troupe. I was doing a character called the Pillsbury Homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as you can imagine, uh, the Pillsbury Doughboy gets triggered after being jumped by a gang of key bells. <laughs> on his way home from school one day. That was his rival game. Right, 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 right. And so, uh, you know, he got, he went home, you know, got triggered, started listening to gangster rap. Like, oh, man. <laughs> Getting into uh, nefarious stuff. Or is that uncomfortable? So, no. so instead of, nothing says nothing like my crescentals. Woo-hoo. <laughs> 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 beat up and he's like, nothing says loving like the blood side be puffing. <laughs> So Chris Sabat came to see our show, and he saw me do that character, and uh, he said, I, I think I found the voice of Majin Buu. Oh my gosh, you do a great Chris Sabat. <laughs> and, uh, and so I went in, and to the point of like, how did I develop, well, I've already, I already had a, a base for the voice, but I didn't know anything about Dragon Ball Z, much less anime, beyond what I did. Well, speed racer or whatever. More importantly, though, more importantly, when Sabbath cast him to bring, come in, brought him in to the studio to record those things, Josh must have done, what, three recordings on that character? Well, I was get, yeah. Not sure that he had actually booked the part. Yeah. <laughs> well, because I didn't know anything about it. And he gave me the, you know, he gave me the Cliff's Notes, really short Cliff's Notes version of the backstory and why I was here and how I came and all this other stuff. And I was just like, so you're he, could, and, uh, he could have been speaking Swahili. I don't know what he was saying. Mass evolution in there, right? And so, but it, it became as simple as okay. Well, look, you, all you you just want to eat candy. Oh, you just, want candy. you just want candy, and uh, you, you don't you don't really want to kill anyone, but bodies. <laughs> so then, and then I get all confused by this stuff, and then I get the script, and he doesn't say anything. There are no lines. They're all, it's just reactions. So then something, a thing that I've been doing, a three and a half minute, four minute rap, now I just have to make sounds. <laughs> and, I, and, and after three, after three sessions, I thought, I think they're going to keep calling me back. <laughs> This is it. I think this is my phone. So Dude, yeah, yeah, I did, I didn't realize that I it, it was mine. So yeah, it just you know. I like Greenhill. I love Greenhill. Everybody got yeah. in. How'd you come up with Mr. Satan's face? He looked, he looked like Hulk Hogan to me. <laughs> <laughs> so if you take with the hair and just the Fu Manchu kind of, thing, he's Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yep, there he is. Let me hear it. Uh, well, Hogan, you want to hear it? Satan or Hulk Hogan? Satan or Hulk, whoever you feel like the evolution. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, Mr. Satan is just, uh, you know, well, I'm sick and tired of all these lies and <laughs> tricks. <laughs> you know? And Hulk Hogan would be like, I'll see you at the Omni and Lantern. <laughs> What are you going to do, brother? What are you going to do when Hulkamania runs wild on you? Oh, my God. That's amazing. So, yeah, I mean, it, 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 a little bit of Macho Man came out in there. There was a little bit of Jesse the Body Ventura, which I didn't realize until later. I was like, I was like, oh, hey, how about that? That wasn't Hogan. Uh, so yeah, it was just an amalgamation of 80s wrestlers that I like. You know what it is? I just figured it out. It's you doing Hogan and then Chris Rager's southern accent coming into it. I love it, the southern and then accent. It, just, it turns into Jesse the Body. Yeah. Um, well, there, there comes out the little Minnesota. Right. Yeah, yeah, Minnesota. You, when you say lot shows and tricks, yeah, lot, 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 shows. lot shows and lot tricks. Shows. Well, that was the thing. Is early on they were really, really. Right, pushing this narrative that because this was being dubbed in Texas, they were really concerned we were all going to have southern accents. And it was gonna, I thought we used to talk about be, this all the time. Be, Guys, be, hey, do your homework. It was going to be dra- <laughs> Dragon Ball Z yokel or something like that. But uh, but you know, Mr. Satan was different, and he needed to be it a little bit. He needed to be a little bit southern. We need to redub it as just we Texas. We do. Texas. Yeah. Well, somebody's got to stop that. The Jada. <laughs> <laughs> My good choices. You know, I, I do believe John Swayze has a live action film that they did a while back uh, in which they did all Texas, you know, Southern voices with these Japanese characters and stuff like that. So it's, uh, they showed it at Honeycomb. Oh, did they? No. Uh, so they anime Houston. Anime Houston. Yeah. Is it funny? I haven't oh, seen it. Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, so there you Japan go. Japatex. Jocelyn Lacey yeah. runs the convention. Yeah. I will oh, be does. there this year. Yeah. I'm so more, excited. Anime Houston. Huh? Anime Houston. Oh, yeah. Anime August? Houston. Yeah. Yeah. Anime Houston. I think he does Anime Dallas, too, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He runs up. Yeah. Yes, he does both. Uh, what about Pan's voice? Yeah. So for Pan, I don't remember all the details of coming up with her, but I just know they said, well, she's 13 or 14, spunky, fights a lot. And so... I mean, if you notice, Pan is just kind of me when I get really excited. <laughs> and so, because I've had people at conventions, like, if I go, hi, oh, it's so good to see They're like, oh, that's Pan. It's just because it's kind of me in a higher register. And you did study fighting. You trained well, but I studied afterwards. Because I did do Taekwondo, but I did, did Taekwondo after I voiced Pan. Mm. So I just, because um, I do a lot of kid voices, so I just went higher in my register. And, so you, you know, expect this time around, it's getting better. Yeah. It's going to be a better voice this time around. It's going to be much, that more amazing and strong. <laughs> yes, because yeah. I'm a Taekwondo. Fighting granddaughters. <laughs> but so I just, uh, yeah, like, cheeseburgers, fries, and blueberries. <laughs> Grandpa! But I do have a southern story to go with it because... I, there, at halfway through, I started, I decided to start calling my parents on the way to my voice acting jobs, because I had about 45 minutes in the car, and they're from Louisiana, but the northeast part, the, not the Cajun part, so it sounds kind of like Texas, and and I did, Chris Bevins was directing at that point, because he directed most of the episodes. I have an idea what he told you, I can't wait Yeah, you probably, and so, uh, he, he's like, oh, ladies, why are you saying Grandpa? <laughs> and, <laughs> And so we were talking through this because he was like, you're sounding like Southern Pan all of a sudden. <laughs> and, what, and so he started quizzing me and I said, well, I don't know. He said, what are you doing right before you come? I said, well, I am calling my parents and they live in Louisiana. And my parents, like they say on the table instead of on the table. And he was like, okay, you cannot call your parents. On the way to your house. You can only call them on the way home. So still to this day, I do not, I'm like, okay, I am not talking to anybody from Louisiana on the way to a job. I will call you on the way home. So I still don't call them on the way to work. So now, so after that, it was like, it was Grandpa instead of Grandpa. Hello. Grandpa. That's great. He used to tell me, um, do it again. 
Minus the Texas. <laughs> oh, uh, really? Yeah. That was only timeline creep with creep in. Was a challenge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when I call them car. Uh, I love I love when Pam, like in the beginning, whenever she first met <laughs> Goku as a kid, and literally is like, I've lost all respect for you. <laughs> but then after that, it's like she's constantly trying to gain his his approval. Yeah. Still, regardless of what's going on. I love that kind of dynamic on that, that series right there. But like, Whenever, like, know, why isn't she trying to gain my approval? Right, I'm like, I'm her grandmother. He's like, I'm still trying to gain your approval. Like, 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 they didn't put that. They didn't put that in the anime. When Pam was a baby, and Mr. Satan's over there training, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the whole time until she shows like the abilities and stuff. So that was that was a neat transition to the to the new series. I like that between me and Gohan, yes, the little, the little yes. flipping the baby stuff. Yeah, that's that one of my favorite scenes. I, I really super. enjoyed that. And then I yes. get to intervene and, you, and you, catch you her like a football. Very upset. <laughs> that was fun. Chi Chi did not approve. No, not Chi Chi approved. What other any questions from y'all? Thoughts, feelings, funny limericks. You know, I, 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 I think it's kind of interesting. Now, mind you, no, I haven't seen it in a while, but mind you, um, Boo is kind of interesting. It really got me, oh. my attention, honestly. Oh, good. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. Well, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Awesome. Oh, okay. yeah. Yes. Have you, have you guys um, ever interacted with like, the Japanese counterpart, like the voice actor from your character? Not mine. Not mine. I've met I've a only, I've only met Ryo Horikawa, voice of Vegeta. Yeah. That's the only person I've ever met. It'd be cool to you. Yeah. Right. Frieza got to. Linda got to meet her Japanese yeah. counterpart. Oh, did she? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Have you ever gotten to do a convention in Japan or anywhere? No. I don't think they want us. <laughs> <laughs> I think There's we're like their redheaded stepchildren. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful American. I think an American voice I think y'all really did. Commandeer the series. Well, just because more <laughs> countries speak English. Mm. That's all we definitely believe. Right. We are definitely the more no. worldly known version <laughs> of that dub. Mm. And by the way, it's all dub. Subs and dubs, by the way, guys, get over it. <laughs> all anime is dub, period. In Japan, they dub it. It's dubbed in Japan, it's dubbed in America, it's all dub. The animation is done first, the voices come second. <laughs> That's the way it's done most everywhere. Uh, so. It is funny. It's so interesting to me. There make. are no subs and dubs argument. That's not real. Okay. I'm <laughs> now glad to know that for sure. I forgot that because I am on fan pages of like Dragon Ball Z, Yu Hakusho, and you've got your... Like so. Well, you have to be careful the, the, of the Lord. gatekeepers out there that yes. try to hold on to the, the sanctity that I only know, <laughs> you know, and that all of you should understand anyway. Um, you know, this, <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this idea that, you know, they know what's best. It's kind of like it, Star Wars is a good example. Like, I really believe that Star Wars fans hate Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Because they they haven't they haven't said a nice thing about Star Wars in years. Right? So yeah, I mean, seriously. Seriously. That's though. true. They are always speaking right? on So I mean I'm like looking at I mean I'm really enjoying the new Star Wars stuff. People are trashing it. I'm like, what are you watching? Why are you still why do you Star Wars? Why, why, yeah, why are you still a fan of this of this genre, uh, of this this title? Did you hate it so the much? The canon, it's like the, the, the canon OG. You know, the they they refuse the new canon. Yeah. I think it's like with well, James look, Bond, it's, whatever it's James done. Bond. It's over. There's no. They're not going to reboot that. <laughs> the, the idea that they're going to go back and remake the the sequel <laughs> is not. bullshit. That's not happening. <laughs> yeah. You know. I I think it's like James Bond. If any of you watch James Bond, I think so. Obviously, the first Sean. Um, Sean, Sean Connery. Connery. Was, Sean Connery. I, I, as an actor, I, I think he's better than oh, Roger Moore, actor, but yes. Roger Moore was the one I grew up with. And then I faded off, and you've got, oh, I only like Tim, I only like Daniel Craig. I think it's kind of whatever you came into is the one that you hang on to. Which you, which you, your favorite's always going to be the one that you knew first. In the end, enjoy the story or yeah. don't. 
Speaking of, speaking of but if you don't, fondness, shut up. <laughs> speaking of really a fondness, though, the connection like that, have y'all ever had like a special moment with, because of the show that like either you yourself has had like a special moment that just stood out from it or like a fan has come up and just shared something that this is. I mean, I think those moments happen fairly more often than you think. People coming up saying, you know, this happened in my life and Dragon Ball Z helped me get through that thing. You know, that happens. The military. Fairly, fairly, fairly regularly, you know. And I was bored <laughs> with so many military people. So we were near a military base, and I was like, I'm just surprised. They're like, oh, no, <coughs> that is how we go and decompress. Like, it we, was re required viewing at the... And not just Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> like, anime. Like, and I love that, that it's crossed over from just shy <coughs> teenagers and, you know... <laughs> They appreciate it too, like military. They're like, oh, dude, you have no idea. It's oh. it's our whew, relaxation when we're you know deployed. That meant a lot. Yeah, it is nice hearing those moments because I just started doing conventions in 2018, and, and you know what happened? The world shut down. So I feel like I still haven't done a lot. And so to have people share like, oh, this you know really helped me get through a tough time and. And people have really opened up about tough times they've been through. Or I looked up, and it's not always, you know, Pan. It could be Goku in the series or some some other character. But it, it helped me build confidence in myself. It helped me get through a tough time. It's so meaningful. I mean, it even gives me chills thinking about it. Because you, when you're recording by yourself as a voice actor, not un, even understanding the series when you get started, and then fast forward to being at the convention and having people share that, it's so meaningful and so surprising. And especially since I got into the convention world late in the game, I didn't get those stories for so long. So it, it means so much to hear those stories that people share. So I, I love hearing those things. Well, Lisa's still a newbie. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am. Yes. Um, Elise mentioned a little bit of it, but I know all four of you said that you weren't really uh, anime fans. You didn't really know anime when you first started. So where are you now? Like after you did Dragon Ball Z, uh, Z Dragon Ball GT, where, how do you feel about, do you still do a lot of voiceover work with different animes? Do you, do you enjoy it as a fan? Oh my, <coughs> love anime or I wouldn't be here. <laughs> no, um, I, I don't watch a lot of shows, but I, I don't really watch a lot of TV, streaming, um, but I appreciate it very much, and I love that it, so many people love it, and I love voicing it. Um, for me, I, I actually kind of was a fan, not super crazy fan, or, you know, like, pursued it a lot, but I mean, I grew up watching stuff like Robotech, uh, Battle of Planets, which was Gatchaman, uh, Star Blazers, which was Battleship Yamato, uh, Robotech. Speed Racer. Right, yeah, G4. So, so that Transmute. was, I, yeah. Transmute. I, anyway. I did not know that was anime, but when I yeah. started, when I went to record for the first time, I'm like, this looks like well, I was, when I went in to record for, for to audition for Dragon Ball Z, I was like, oh, it's Japan Animation. And I remember yeah, saying that, that I remember saying that out loud. And somebody there corrected me, like, oh, no, it's called anime now. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, that's pretentious. <laughs> anyway, because like, actually Japanimation actually described what it was. <laughs> I felt like that made more sense. <laughs> it's animation from Japan. Yes. Japanimation. <laughs> Great term. Why did we need to mess with it? <laughs> right? Well, that's true. I was probably watching it and didn't realize right. it. So it wasn't that I wasn't a fan. I just, I hadn't been right. introduced to things like Dragon Ball <laughs> before. So I totally got into it. And I mean, I love the anime culture and anime conventions and I mean the minute that I started going to anime conventions I started a YouTube channel if I haven't announced it to you yet uh, so I when I go to conventions I in, do interviews and interview anime voice actors and other people and so that's been really fun because so it's youtube.com slash anime adventures my shameless plug but that's been really fun because I get to talk to other actors 
because you know we don't always get to interact at recording studios so it's fun to even hear what other actors are doing but then I've been able to release panels and then I get to interact with people when they because I read all the comments and then try to reply to as many as I can but it's <coughs> then just fun to hear what people respond to and what shows they like and what um, on social media, like just to hear what people are, what they like, and I'll ask questions like, "What's your favorite Dragon Ball moment?" And so to hear people's favorite scenes from Dragon Ball or from My Hero Academia, so that part has been really fun for me over the past several years as I've started doing <coughs> conventions on my YouTube channel. But I, I love anime. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, I uh, I wasn't a big fan before. I've gotten more into it. Uh, I also have three children and a wife at home, so I'm not as avid a fan as all of you are. You know. More importantly, three daughters. It's not like you have three children, you have three, three daughters. Three daughters, a set of twins. Mm. What are so, your ages? Uh, yeah, 12-year-old uh, twins, 15-year-old. Oh, you're bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, I grew up on Hanna-Barbera, Warner Brothers. Me too. And... Uh, and being getting into the anime game, uh, I can appreciate more of the the products. You know, different uh, franchises, One Piece to Hunter X Hunter, all that stuff. It's, it's pretty cool. I wish I had more time to to get more into it, but I usually uh, I usually only see what I record. <laughs> uh, oh. oh yeah. <laughs> So she asked what our favorite scenes to record or what lines we had. I loved the scene where Pan fights Baby. I, that's kind of one of my all-time favorites. Some of my favorites, are specific, specifically from Dragon Ball, are those moments with Boo and Satan and living in that house. <laughs> Taking baths and cooking eggs. And, <laughs> they were roommates in real life. Yeah. These two. So like you know, like those moments were happening. Like you know, one of us would record first because we all recorded individually. That was so funny. Be like, hey man, I know what you're doing today. You're coming in. This is gonna happen. I'm gonna make you eggs, and we're gonna take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> like, real life, boy. <laughs> I remember that conversation. He goes, hey, uh, so uh, I uh, I was at Funimation today. And, uh, dude, yeah. you and I become roommates. <laughs> I was like, serious? He's like, yeah. You like, you make this house, and uh, we take a bath together. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I was like, where is this going? I, dude, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to make you some eggs. Yeah. And I'm, oh, okay. And then sure enough, we just... We continued on, on I think I made a post about that moment of us taking the bath. I made like a tweet one time that said, sometimes things get a little gay. <laughs> Just go with it. <laughs> so, anyway. Were those your favorite scenes, too? I liked when all adopted the puppy. <laughs> yeah, B, B, uh -huh. home, which was Chris Bevins. Oh, yeah. He was the voice of B. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, no, my, my favorite scene, my first favorite scene was when Boo went to uh, the city and <laughs> found ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> I finally got lines. Mm -hmm. I got to sing it. And, <laughs> I, and uh, when he asked the, excuse me, when he asked the girl, Do you think Boo's sexy? <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. And then uh, the, the pudding scene in the movie, Battle of Gods. Oh, oh pudding cups are for <laughs> <laughs> I like that it's one too because Hercule gets drunk in that movie. Yeah. And it's really funny little moment where he's actually I think this is in the deleted scenes or whatever, mm -hmm. but there's a deleted scene of the Dell coming to my side as I'm drunk and kinda hung over and like she's like, Dad, Dad, can I help you? I'm like, Oh man. Uh, just just give me a I, I wanted to say this. I said uh, I, the line was, Oh, can you just give me a cheeseburger? Because <laughs> <laughs> we were playing on that whole David Hasselhoff thing where he yeah, got yeah, drunk yeah. and wanted to yeah, yeah. his daughter to yeah. get the cheeseburger. Yeah. But I wanted to say this. Uh, oh, this hangar was going to be over 9,000. <laughs> <laughs> and I begged Sam. I was like, please, that's hilarious. Come on, please. He's like, no. <laughs> no. I'm like, dude. 
It's hilarious. <laughs> My favorite scenes are, um, I love the one where y'all are tossing the baby yes. back and forth and I intervene. <laughs> I love the one where Chi Chi makes Goku and, um, the green guy, come on. Pick a low, get a driver's license. Sorry. Mm. Um, I, I like, yeah. I mean, I, I, there was another one that I really liked, but I forgot about it. So those little so slice of life they, moments kind of things? Well, that's I really like all she's in. I mean, she is just Well, I really like those, those little moments in Dragon Ball, especially a lot of it has, have, takes place at your house, actually. Right. I like it because it's humorous, but... Um, <laughs> It is fluff, so I recorded for Battle of the Gods for two hours, which if you're not familiar, is like 60 lines or reacts. Cut down to three. So, that, but <laughs> it was fun getting to record them. Wow. And I should elaborate on mine. I feel like I gave the kind of answer my husband does when I ask him a question, and he's just like, yeah. Because I said, I like Pan fighting baby. But I like that scene so much because I've even gone back to watch it because it seems like she, like, kind of goes through different emotions and is feeling protective and then goes into a huge <coughs> battle scene. So I just really like that scene. And then from what I remember recording, I always liked the fighting scenes. <coughs> and I think that is when I had those moments, since I had not, I mean, Pam was my first anime job to book, like I, I think I said this earlier, and voice acting job to book. And so when I was in the booth fighting, and I, I always have to, like, get physical, and I just already kicked something, but I have to, like, ha, And I would, you know, was having my first fighting scenes and going, wow, I'm getting to do this. And so I just had those moments, like, this is cool. Is anybody? No. I mean, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, so I really loved those moments and still can remember them like they're yesterday. Oh, I remember the one that I forgot when Chi Chi finds out that Fidel is wealthy. She goes from hating Gohan dating her to being like, oh my, well, what can I give you? Actually, I'm wealthy. I know that. That's why I'm looking at you as I'm saying to like, yes, Chi Chi the gall allowance. digger who's always hated Mr. Satan is now like, oh, 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 oh I didn't know. Oh. <laughs> Well, yeah. you, you can come by and visit my city, Satan City. <laughs> uh, which is a harder process, doing the anime or like doing a video game or something like that? Doing video games. Mm. Well, they're different. Anime. Yeah. Anime. Anime. yeah. For, For me, like, at least. What's the question? Which is harder? What's harder? Which is harder? Doing, the, doing the dub or doing the Freeway. video game? Video I'd say video games. <laughs> I, hate, I hate doing Dragon Ball video games. I love really? video I games. Hate it. What's that? <laughs> Because uh, they don't give us any of the cutscenes, so we're not matching. Mm. We're not matching flaps. We're matching the previous the Japanese voice actor's timing. I'm like, oh, oh. I'm like, oh. I like it. I'm like, oh, that's not gonna match. <laughs> <laughs> well, and guess what? When you get the game, did it match? It does. Do our flaps match? Care. Yeah, it, that's the, it, Do it our also, flaps match? It Sometimes. also doesn't match. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in the show, in the show, do our flaps match? All of them. Right, but in the yeah. games, our yeah. flaps are yeah. sometimes. You know why? Because they don't give us those cuts of time. Who's doing it? <laughs> they also don't. They don't I, I, I'm, a person, I'm a person who wants there to be a good product. And for it to be off seat wise means it's going to be a little suckier. It's much better to do the suckier. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we don't, we don't get paid much better. They, they completely cut us, they gutted us <laughs> from that Kakarot game. But we still make gutted more us. per hour when we do video games. That's when we do. Yeah, well, they didn't gut the Japanese <laughs> actors. They gutted us. Anyway. Okay. The, the process is it, generally easier because you're not having to match the flaps. So you're not really having to go back. The only time that you'd have to go back and redo something is if uh, you didn't do it well or there was a technical issue. Otherwise, it's just, here's the list of things you're going to do and yeah. I get the impression that Chris, you're a perfectionist. And that's yeah, I don't like so it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you guys. I totally got that. Okay. Well, I, I, as far as other video games are concerned that aren't Dragon Balls, yeah. either necessarily, I would say that the formula is a little harder because you're having to repeat lines multiple yeah. times, mm. repeat reactions or and the uh, and the you know, physicalities and stuff like that in different ways over different yeah. times and different links. And so sometimes it can be a little more of a, a physical strain. Mm. 
uh, not necessarily a mental strain to, to, to pop those things out, but uh, so you want to be have a good idea of what you can do, what you can't do, and maybe what parts of what you need to do can be done at the end as opposed to needing to be done. The the, yes, exactly. Yeah. So, since you guys started dubbing, do you notice when regular shows are off? Like they were, you know, just a regular TV show, but you know that they're not syncing. I notice it all the do time. You? Now. Yes. Yeah. I'm just like, it drives me nuts. Yeah. That's why I can't yeah, watch I, them in <laughs> dub foreign films on, on Netflix. I'm not talking about dub. I'm talking about your average when they go back and TV oh, show. Like when the sink is when off. When they don't, oh, the sink sure. is off. I notice it so much more. Right. For sure. Yeah. You need to call your internet people. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time I was on Barney and they, after we, they, they filmed a, a scene and yes, everything. Barney, they, if anyone grew up to Barney. The kids had Barney. to stop that makes sense. before they went back to the dressing room. They had to stop and they'd do pickups. Okay, hold on. I need you to pick up. I need, and they'd have it marked on the mm -hmm. script, right? For whatever reason it was clear. I just need to pick it up in case, you know. So they'd be, okay. Cheese, Cindy. <laughs> oh, wow, Barney. <laughs> All right, next. And so I was like, oh. <coughs> and then later on, I dubbed Annie. Oh. Um, Full school. School. Uh -huh. Anyway, yeah. I digress. Do you have a question? No. Um, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Couple more. Yeah. 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 I know Chris and Josh were friends before, but I know uh, also when you record, you're usually recording by yourself in the booth. So do y'all ever hang out or, you know, have friendship? Or this is like, oh my God, I get to see you in real life. Well, at conventions, I mean, we had dinner last night, and I'm hoping we have dinner again tonight. Yeah, we get to know each other, and then we get very excited. <laughs> Josh is like, no, dinner. We get very excited to see each other at conventions. I would say over time, especially in the Dragon Ball cast, you know, we we kind of hung out in those earlier days. It was a Just very small studio. That, and they, they used to be a little more inclusive. Like, we used to have, like, Christmas parties. And yeah, we did have Christmas Stuff like that. So, like, we would come out to, like, the Christmas party. You know, so it was a bit more of a, a, bit more of a family atmosphere. And you could pop in and the booth. Yes. I mean, yeah, you can't do that now. Yeah. Is that just Well, you don't really have. Partly, you know, the old it's Frost very Bank unprofessional. building. And the, probably the old Frost Bank building, we had nothing but whisper booths, whisper rooms. These days, in Funimation, you know, you have full yeah. professional, well, Crunchyroll now, I mean, full professional, you know, nicely done studios. And about but you have to check in, them. you have, I mean, it's all this formal. You can't just pop in and go. I'm friends with this director, and I see who's it, or I'm just going to say hi and interrupt their session. I mean, it was used to be <coughs> casual. You can still interrupt them. You <laughs> 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 yeah, Mr. Sagan. Yeah. Well, if you just pop in, hey, what's up, man? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? You think that was because the foundation was still fairly It was family owned. It was small. Yeah, I mean now we're now we're, we're now we're owned by Sony. <laughs> As things have progressed, it has become a little more of a corporate atmosphere, mm -hmm. and that's fine. You know, whatever. Timing? Yes. What we'll made them choose the name Berkey instead of just saying? I don't know, man. I have no idea. Barry, All I know is that Barry Watson. It was just a, a couple oh, of yeah, you. You can't say Satan. Yeah. You, can't, you can't mention God or and the death hell and all or dying or anything like that. And Y seven lines for the little kids. Right. On Y seven television, yeah. you can't say those things, right? So they had to change his name. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. Barry and some of the guys at Funimation just came up with the name Hercule. Mm -hmm. like Hercule I thought him. that the French Hercule. actually had the best name for him. They named him Mister Savage. Mm -hmm. I thought, man, that's way better. They should have named him Mister mm -hmm. Savage. But whatever. So anytime we had to record, if if my name was mentioned, we had to record it both ways, as her yep. and as Mr. Satan. You know, as you say, I can't believe I never thought of this before. What if it was too close to Macho Randy? <laughs> I'm right. Because you think they don't want to call him Mr. Savage because? Do you think? Yeah, that but that was my do? voice that did that, not anyone else's. You know, and it was more Hogan than Macho. <laughs> Don't pay me to think. Or just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on now, you need to listen to this. Bring the kill, bring the kill, bring the kill. Come here, let's see you get the reindeer, buddy. There's like a lot of 
fight scenes and action going on during this. When you get into your reporting, how often did you find yourself acting out that moment and like feeling like you were just in there, so in the moment, you know, you were reporting it? Well, uh, I mean, the physicality, I think, is important, what Elise was talking about, too. You do want to kind of engage your body, you know, but you have to do it in such a way that you're not knocking over microphones or punching right. the walls in the studio or anything. And back then, it was a little harder because you had the whisper boots. And I literally, literally pressed my arms against the wall so I didn't knock something over so I could use my body and still physical. Because you physical. do use your body in those. Yes. But you can't. It's hard to make running or fighting or any sounds. Right. So but you know, if you're running, you can't you can't move your feet like that. That's going to be hurt. No. Nope. Right. So you still got to. <laughs> you know. No, you I like it so much easier because you think about it like going ha versus ha. Mm -hmm. Or can you hear the difference. You can hear. And yeah. I even think like when you're doing whether it's anime or commercial, if you truly smile, like hi, how are you? Yep. Hi, how are you? Uh, you know, or well, I guess I didn't move my mouth that time in my ventriloquism <laughs> match. But um, you go, That's hi, scary. how are you? It's hard to sound That's really scary. peppy with a hi, how are you? So, or hi, how are you? I didn't think like you're doing it. Yeah, it's, well, in, the, in the end, it's acting. I'm so happy to see right? you. You got to be an actor. But I think physically getting into it is so much easier. Now, I will say the one person I've asked, because I ask this a lot on Anime Adventures, Linda Young was the only one who said, oh, no, I don't physically get into it. But when she said, and I'm going to do a terrible impression right here, uh, I watched her say, you stupid monkeys. No, you did pretty good. I Thank you. Good. But her, so she didn't physically, like, necessarily get into it, but her whole body tightened mm -hmm. up. So it was still kind of a physical manifestation of what she was saying. We all have our own ways. Yes. I, I guess all of us tend to, I just kind of mimic what's happening in the scene. Yeah, to I get that too. energy. Me too. It's, it's right there in front of you. Most of the time it's drawn right there, there mm -hmm. for you. Just yeah. imitate I'm that. I'm usually standing like this. <laughs> or this. Yeah. Or this. You're very Like Ross and I come from that world of improv, right? So we're used to taking suggestions and creating our own kind of worlds around them, you know? And it, it kind of takes that, what you've learned from improv, and apply it to something that literally is right there on the screen for you. You don't have to create that atmosphere. It, it's already there for you. You just put yourself in there, it's a, it's just a much easier process to kind of yeah. think of it that way, I think. But I do think, like, it's much easier to sound heroic for me if I stand mm -hmm. like this, or sound kind of like mousy and nerdy yeah. if you, yeah, stand like that. So, when you're Let's, alone at home, try different voices and see if you can sound heroic sitting like this. <laughs> it's as simple as, if you see someone, you, how are you doing, and they go, I'm great. Mm -hmm. Like that guy's not great. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's that guy. That guy's lying to me. How are you feeling? I'm having a shitty day. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? A lot of energy for a shitty day. No, I have been That's, that person before. Right? How so, are you? Oh. It, what do you? What do you get? What do you see? It's gonna. It's gonna tell you. And then, yeah, like you said, improv. Because right. none of Trust us are. It. None of us are out there trying to fool you into feeling something. <laughs> You know, we, we, we want you to feel it. We want, we're trying to be there. We're trying to give you something real. You know, whether it's joy, excitement, pain, sadness, you know, excitement, whatever it is. You know, we, we want you to feel it, so we have to feel it. You know? Have you ever had a moment in one of the shows where you were going through lines and you got really emotional during that time? Like, you were kind of drawn into your character and you felt well, Hercule doesn't have a lot of philosophical moments. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think once he had his grandchildren and stuff, I think that kind of... I think yeah. to me, the most awkward scenes are the one where Chi-Chi thinks Gohan or Goku's dying, and she has to cry, because I'm a character actress. I'm used to being wacky and crazy, so I feel weird. You know, I mean, I know that, and I'm also not a mom in real life. I do have a husband, but I mean, all my... I think the reason that I felt awkward because it wasn't authentic. I wasn't that drawn in. I was pretending to cry and um, be sad, and, and I hated it. And I didn't like doing it. And went the way so I'm not complimenting myself, by the way. <laughs> not, not, not to brag. 
So I want you to all go back and find that moment. Mm. And I want you to write down your review <laughs> of how you felt Cynthia's acting was. And then compare it to where she's raging. Then I want you to compile those all into a database. <laughs> and release them on the internet. Yes. We'll put it on the YouTube channel. Right. Yeah, release it on YouTube channel. Yeah, I'll put it on my YouTube channel. Cynthia, he said, say, Cynthia Kranz, actor? <laughs> I love you. Or, I love you. Does anybody have one more question before we're done today? Well, good, because we're done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you liked it. If you haven't had a chance to yet, please take a second, like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, comment down below, share with a friend. And if you like what I do, check out my Patreon page or buy me a coffee on PayPal. Remember, let it go and keep moving forward. Have a magical day. Bye.